But what an interesting world we have today, folks. Has anyone really looked at what's going on since Trump got elected? Has anyone really noticed the change in people, the change in social media, the massive amount of division that seems to have been interjected into virtually every aspect of our lives? You look at the conversations on social media these days, it's all left and right. It's all argument, it's all belittling other people, and it's all attacking anyone who doesn't buy into the belief system, whichever belief system those have chosen to buy into. There seems to be very little objectivity left with people, and it's been quite fascinating to see. You've got people supporting more powers for the police, you've got women supporting war, you've got people throwing all the information they've learned in the last 10 or 15 years out the window to just put their blind faith in government. Looking at the whole Trump thing, I've tried to remain completely objective through the whole thing. I'm certainly not buying into the concept that he is the saviour that everyone's waiting for. I'm certainly not buying into the concept that he is the most evil man that ever existed. But apparently you have to buy into one of these concepts. It's really been quite amazing to see. If you say a word against Trump, you get attacked by the Trump supporters with quite an extraordinary amount of venom. And if you do not question Trump, then you get attacked by the anti-Trump supporters with pretty well the same degree of venom that you get from the other side. And if you choose to remain objective and look at things with an open mind and look at the good stuff he's doing and the bad stuff he's doing and attempt to weigh it all up and not particularly resign yourself to either side, then you get attacked by both camps. It is quite interesting, folks, and I think the name of the game is Divide and Conquer, and it's a working charm. But the thing about all this, folks, is that with all this divide and conquer, what this has really shown is people's unwillingness to cooperate with each other. You know, really the people shouldn't be arguing, they should be sitting back and seeing what Trump is going to do, and they should be unifying as one people of the United States. I mean, frankly, those people who are out there protesting Trump are simply protesting democracy. That's all they're doing. I mean, their side didn't win. So what? That's called democracy. That's the way a vote works. There's always one group of people who your side doesn't win, and that's just the way it is. And you don't see these riots every time it's somebody else. So it's kind of ridiculous that these riots are happening and these protests are happening. And it should be very obvious to everybody that these riots and protests are being funded. I mean, why else would they be happening? People don't normally do this when their political party loses. And really what this should be about is unity. And it's shown how unprepared people are to embrace unity and to really step back and look what's going on and the thing is folks it doesn't matter what sort of world trump is going to lead you into if you're not a unified people and you can't step into your moral compass then it isn't going to matter you know no one can lead you to safety if you're not prepared to save yourselves and you're not prepared to start doing the right thing and adjust your moral compass stop with the accusations stop accusing everybody who disagrees with you as being controlled opposition or paid stop buying into all this propaganda you're being fed I mean, stop buying into the left or the right because the truth is that there is no left or right. It's really about people and where your heart is that's going to make a difference. That's what's going to bring about a real change and nothing else is going to do it. You know, some months back I said it isn't going to matter which way it goes, you know, whether Trump does the right thing or whether he does the wrong thing because it's the opportunity this is going to provide to people. Ultimately, what this whole Trump presidency is going to come down to is what the people do. And this is what I've been saying right from the beginning. And what the people are doing right now is terrible, to be quite honest. It really is. People are simply buying into the divide and conquer strategy. And people seem to have thrown all logic and reason and research out of the window. For example, if you question Trump at all, you get accused of being financed by George Soros these days. And any questions against Trump, you also get accused of buying into CNN propaganda. They've certainly done well with their fake news meme, folks. It seems to have infected most people's minds. And so now people believe that anything that disagrees with the opinion that they have is fake news or funded by George Soros. It's quite amazing to see what has happened to the independent media and it's quite amazing to see how many people have put all of their objectivity aside and decided to follow Trump which is essentially following the state I mean the state is the state folks regardless of what face it puts on I mean you look at Trump's cabinet well he is surrounded by the very same 
Goldman Sachs and Zionist crew that all the previous administrations have been surrounded by as well. So you've got to really step back and look at this and just check it out and see what he's going to do and what he's going to get away with and what he isn't. He's certainly finding that things are not as easy as he wanted, so in many ways that's a good sign because it shows that, well, he isn't going to be just introducing this completely over-the-top dictatorial manner of governance because he's just not been allowed to get away with it. And that's kind of a good thing. You've got to have some sort of checks and balances in there, as corrupt as the system is. I mean, you can't give total power to any one man. But then you've got to look at what it is that he's doing and what it is that the Supreme Court is standing up against. And as I've often said, why isn't he doing the really important things? I mean, sure, sealing the borders and making sure your country is secure is good on one hand, but what was it that brought the United States to the point of insecurity that it suffers today? Well, that event was 9-11. So why isn't that being investigated? And why is DynCorp still being given government contracts? And why is the Clinton Foundation not been investigated and had all of its assets frozen. I mean, these are important issues. And a lot of what's going on the ground seems to be a smokescreen to create a lot of instability on the ground and to keep people fighting amongst each other over the whole left and right paradigm, rather than looking at these bigger issues which have caused all of the problems that we now see in the world today. I mean, 9-11 and the War of Terror is something that really seriously needs to be looked at as quickly as possible because that could bring this whole situation to a complete closure right now. It could stop all of these invasions. It could bring about a platform whereby we could start rebuilding these countries, which would stop the migrant influx into Europe. I mean, there's so many things that could be achieved by simply investigating the 9-11 attacks and freezing the assets of Don Corp and the Clinton Foundation. So why isn't this being done? Now, like I said, folks, he is doing a lot of positive stuff on the ground for the people but he's not doing anything really positive on the international stage. But, you know, you've got to give him credit for doing some good things. And it's important to understand here, folks, that Trump is not the leader here. I mean, there are forces above Trump. There are those who control things that have always controlled things, of which Trump is simply an agent and working on their behalf. I mean, if you think this isn't going on, then honestly, you've got rocks in your head because everything is a play, folks. All the world is a stage. It really is, folks, and all we're being offered here that I can see is simply another play. It's another path towards an inevitable conclusion, but it's all leading to the same place. And whatever system the politicians, any politician is going to offer to the people, ultimately, it's still a system of control in whatever shape it takes. But whatever way it is, I can't see it really leading towards anything that the people want. And that might sound like I'm speaking out against Trump, but it's not, folks. You know, the problem is with whatever system anybody brings along and whatever leader gets put in place, if people don't change what's in their heart and they don't change their moral compass, then it's not going to matter. I mean, that's really the way it is, folks, like I was saying before. And what this has really shown is people's unwillingness to do that. You know, how easily the people can be divided over an issue and how well they're being played. I mean, really, the, the way the media is attacking Trump and some media is, I mean, this is all such theatre, folks. It's all such theatre to get people rallying against him, to get people rallying for him rather than sitting back and unifying as a nation and seeing what is happening and what is unfolding and addressing it and questioning it. You know, but ruling by executive order, this is no way to do things. And you wouldn't have to rule by executive order if the people were not so divided. So people need to put down all of this division, stop buying into this left and right paradigm and step back and really look at things objectively and just see where it's going. You know, if they unify as one nation, one American people, then they have the ability to question things. They have the ability to look at where it's going properly and to really be objective about it. But don't think anyone can lead you to safety if you have not adjusted your moral compass. If people are still prepared to do the wrong thing in their daily life and in their daily activities, if they're still prepared to attack and belittle and question anyone who has an opinion that disagrees with them, then it's not going to get anywhere. And the nation's never getting it anywhere, and you're just playing right into their hands. I mean, all America is doing at the moment is marching towards a massive confrontation within its own borders, like civil war or whatever. I mean, there's all sorts of ways they could take this. And that's why they are whipping up this whole chaos and division meme that they are pushing on everybody. 
you look at the media, they're always going, it's chaos, it's chaos, it's chaos. And how there are two camps, two camps, anti-Trump, anti-Trump, for Trump, for Trump. And anybody who disagrees with either side is the enemy. And like I said, folks, even if you try to remain objective, then you become the enemy of both camps. And it's been very sad to see. But a lot of the independent media is thrown their weight so far behind the state that is quite, quite shocking to see. And everything has been such a play. I mean, the media is really spinning things, and so is many forces within the independent media really spinning things to make sure the camp remains divided and to make sure that everybody sees a problem with everything when problems aren't really there, and they're not looking below the surface to see what the real issues are. And it's all such theatre, folks. It really is. It's all theatre for the masses, and it's designed to get reactions and to measure those reactions. You know, you look at what happened during the Obama administration. The Obama administration did all the things that the Trump administration is doing, even with this travel ban. So why was it made so public when Trump did it? Why was it taken as a travel ban and people didn't look below the surface and look at actually the little testing of the waters that happened with the Department of Homeland Security? Because that's really what it was about. It wasn't about the travel ban at all. You know, and people protest Trump for banning these seven countries, and it's not good that any travel ban has been put in place, but how come they're protesting Trump banning these seven countries when Obama had been bombing these countries for the last eight years and nobody complained about that at all? So people need to look at how they're being played, and they need to stop these protests and get a little bit of focus of what the bigger picture is here. You know, you've got to get out of this left and right paradigm, this left and right mentality, and see that there's a bigger picture here. Trump wouldn't have got into the position that he's in without help, folks, regardless of whether he has good intentions or whether he doesn't. Well, I mean, there's so many ways out of this mess, folks, but it's got to come from the hearts of the people. And if we're not prepared to look there, then there's not going to be any solution found. And, you know, all of this left and right bickering that's going on, all this squabbling, all the attacks, all the animosity I'm seeing on YouTube threads and on Facebook and everywhere I look, I'm just seeing people fighting with each other belittling each other, falsifying information, bending information to suit their own agenda, and just locking themselves into a belief system. You know, it's just very, very disturbing to see how people have fallen into this trap. And I think it's time people regain some focus. I really do. I think it's important.